Okay, so this is going to be an explanation of why people say feel isn't real in a golf swing. Um, and I did something about this before, but I've been thinking about it more. And I think what it is, is that what you can feel in a golf swing are the forces you're applying. And what you perceive to be real is the direction things are moving and the paths they're taking when they turn around, what's happening, right? So if you understand the complexity of, so first off, there's one force constantly acting in a golf swing, right? Which is gravity. So just for instance, here's a feel versus real idea, right? Let's say I wanna move the club with a passive arm on a direct diagonal like this. So if I apply force in that exact direction, the force of gravity is down. And so instead of going there, I'm gonna go there because the force of gravity will bend that down. So in order to take that line, my force has to go more this way. Same thing happening in the other direction then, right? The club is falling and people perceive that as, well, then I must be applying force downward toward the ball, but that's not really the case. Gravity is taken care of down as your body takes care of rotating enough to, to have the arm, this club sort of fly away from your body and find the ball. So as you let gravity fall, you rotate just enough, do it with one very passive arm and you see what I mean. If I rotate too fast, I'm over it. If I were to rotate too slow, I'm gonna miss it low. So what you're always working with is gravity. And then the other aspect are there's some passive limitations, right? So if I'm coming into the ball, and this is one that I was just talking about with someone yesterday. So we perceive that we want a slightly inside path coming into the ball, which makes sense. But if I apply force on a path like that, you can even see as I'm doing it, this shoulder is moving that way, right? So if I apply force on a path like that, I'm actually pulling the club that way. So in order to find that path, I actually have to apply force this way, then I become square here, right? So I apply force this direction and the club comes to square. So it's almost like a 45 degree line here. So those are just some examples. So you have to start just fooling around with all the parameters. And I think the big one to start with is try to get yourself to be in relationship with gravity the whole time. So understand that when you get a heavy object like this, now I have to be compliant basically with gravity. I can't think I'm going to, with any effectiveness, muscle this thing on a plane. I very naturally get to here, let gravity do its thing, and then I actually just kind of stay ahead of it a little bit almost. I really don't add a lot of force. I just have to stay out of its way and let it fall. So get that feeling. And then it's trickier with your club, obviously, but just feel like rather than trying to apply force toward the ball, all you're really doing is a little bit of rotation and let most of the force come from gravity. So gravity is dropping the thing. All you have to do is rotate enough that the club gets out to the ball. So if I just be very passive with this, All I really did was do sort of a slow rotation that sped up there. Almost no, no upper body force in that at all. And really just the feeling of sensing the fall from gravity and just kind of staying out of its way and directing it, directing that force down to the ball. So I'll do another one and practice this and really feel like you just Basically, the feeling is you're tossing your arms up. If I was going to toss them up and let it fall. Toss them up and let it fall and see how passive you can be. And then again, like I talked about with the path, don't toss them straight at your point. Put your force this way 
and your body will bring it around. So the limitations of your arms and also the downward force of gravity. So find the, find the direction of force that actually gets you there. So for me, I feel like I'm throwing force. I know I'm going to here, but my force pattern is actually straight backwards. If I go that way, the limitations of my body and the fall of gravity bring it around and then I stay with that feeling of falling and then just kind of stay out of its way. So throwing straight back, let it find its place there and then just kind of turn around with it. So throw it straight back, turn around with it. One more. So here's your force vectors. Throw it this way, straight back. It will find its way around. As it gets around, then you turn around with it. So it's already gathered a whole bunch of momentum. Then you just direct that momentum back through the ball. Let's try again. Let's see if we catch one. There's a nice one. And so you'll get a little, you'll get more out of it. Again, if you throw this way. Then if you go right at it, then you're dropping under, then you have to start rotating back too soon. So give it a chance to get a little over and then rotate around with it. And the same thing, so, and if you're training that feel, um, so the other thing you're tending to obviously is your alignment and your shoulder plane. So this is gonna help you with that too because you're not gonna get weird alignments going. You want to really feel what a perfect alignment is. But you can also with this throw the direction of your force straight back. It will find its way around. And then you're coming from the inside. So throw straight back. Come from the inside if you want a little draw. So that's it. Work on that. And what you're really attending to is be constantly aware of what gravity is doing and get yourself in sync with that. That's how you become very efficient in your swing and produce a lot of power without that much effort.